Chapter 15, Fundamental and Technical Analysis Fundamental analysis is an examination of the business outlook of an asset. For example, if you are buying a running shop, you will probably look for sales, cost of sales, net income, customers, competition, future expansion, etc. If and only if you think that buying this shop is the best use of your money and time, you go ahead and purchase it. All of this investigating and vetting of a viable business is the fundamental analysis. On the other hand, technical analysis is a study of past price action and an assumption that all information that can be known is already in the price. Circumstances and reasoning of price action can be different each time. However, human behavior remains a constant. This predictability of human behavior gives a technical analyst an edge to identify short-term opportunities in the market. However, the choice between technical and fundamental analysis is not mutually exclusive. This is not a one or the other situation. Most of the investors, including myself, use both. Generally, investors give more importance to one method, but they use both. Investors are in the market to make money, not to pick fights between trading and investing, or between fundamental analysis and technical analysis. I don't care if the theories of efficient market or random walk are correct or not. I don't care whether the value investors are right or the growth investors are correct. What I care about, and what any prudent investor should care about, is whether capital is secured and is making sufficient money or not. To invest successfully, you need not understand beta, efficient markets, modern portfolio theory, option pricing, or emerging markets. You may, in fact, be better off knowing nothing of these. That, of course, is not the prevailing view at most business schools, whose finance curriculum tends to be dominated by such subjects. In our view, though, investment students need only two well-taught courses, how to value a business and how to think about market prices. Warren Buffett Fundamental Analysis, Pros and Cons As per Investopedia's definition, Fundamental analysis is a method of measuring a security's intrinsic value by examining related economic and financial factors. I define fundamental analysis a little differently. Any analysis that does not consider prevailing or historical market price is a fundamental analysis. There are only two sources of information about an asset or a security. The first is the market data where it is traded, and the second is the rest of the world. Any analysis that is leaving the market data out is fundamental analysis. Disadvantages of Fundamental Analysis Let's talk about the disadvantages of fundamental analysis, which in my opinion is only one. Fundamental analysis is hard. By definition, information or data available for fundamental analysis is vast and immense, and it is hard to obtain and even harder to analyze. It is challenging enough to explore one company, However, investors need to examine a bunch to pick the best of the best. Therefore, investors take the easy route and fall for technical analysis because, for technical analysis, you need only one set of information, price and volume. You can go to Google or Yahoo and download this data within a minute. Once you decide to analyze security by its fundamentals, you need to deal with massive data. Fundamental information is not price-earnings ratio liquidity ratio, or price to sales. This price-based information is available to everybody with a click of a button. Hundreds of online filters can sift through this information for you. However, the real value comes from information that is not in a company's financial statements. Sales trends, customer behaviors, supply chain management, competition, technical advancements, product life, total addressable market, segment niche, and so on and so forth. All of these are essential aspects of business and must be critically analyzed. However, there is a vast amount of data available. An investor's ability to sift through the data, turn data into information, and use information as an advantage over other investors is limited. In this age of information, data is so vastly available that even differentiating between usable and trash data is challenging. Leaving a critical analysis or using incorrect data can lead an investor to an incorrect and costly decision. To counter the risk, a fundamental analyst has few choices. 1. Rely on other analysts to make investment decisions. 2. Make few investments, analyze as deeply as possible, and hope for the best. 3. 
Do shallow analysis like P-E ratio, liquidity ratios, but acquire a large number of securities to compensate. 4. Be a pure Benjamin Graham-style value investor. Invest only in deeply discounted securities and do not commit a significant portion of capital on one bet. None of these choices are perfect, and there is no guarantee that fundamental analysis will lead you to financial success. Remember, Warren Buffett is Warren Buffett because millions of other investors are not Warren Buffett. Benefits of Fundamental Analysis Keeps the noise out and keeps the investor emotionally checked. The most significant advantage, in my opinion, of fundamental analysis is that it keeps the day-to-day -day noise of price action out of the picture. Because of the fundamental analysis, investors can focus on business developments that change much slower than daily price action. There is no doubt that in the investment business, emotions are the biggest enemy. Fundamental analysis keeps the emotions in check and protects an investor from irrational decisions. Once Charlie Munger was asked to summarize his reasons for success, he replied, I am rational. Being rational and not reacting to your emotional biases is not easy, but very rewarding. Increases investors' understanding of business and economy. Fundamental analysis is laborious and complicated, but it significantly improves an investor's vision of a business and economy. Thoroughly analyzing a company takes an immense amount of time, weeks after weeks of sifting through the data, reading reports, analyzing financial information, obtaining a working understanding of customers, supply chain, manufacturing, etc. However, at the end of all these efforts, an investor gains a tremendous amount of knowledge. After all of this, an investor may decide not to invest in the company, but the knowledge bank will surely benefit in all future investments. Technical Analysis – Pros and Cons As per Investopedia's definition, technical analysis is a trading discipline employed to evaluate investments and identify trading opportunities by analyzing statistical trends gathered from trading activity, such as price movement and volume. As it is evident from the definition that technical analysis is the study and interpretation of the market activity, it is a summarization of trade tickets. If you look at your trade ticket, you will find three basic pieces of information besides the security name. 1. Date and time of the trade. 2. Trade price. 3. Quantity of securities traded. This information can be downloaded in a summarized form by any investor from several online resources for free. You can dissect this data in whichever way you want. There are countless online tools available that can present this information in different types of charts and can calculate hundreds of indicators. You must realize and understand that dozens of different charts and hundreds of different indicators are available, but all of these are based on three basic pieces of information, time, volume, and price of the trade, nothing more. Disadvantages of Technical Analysis Let's discuss some disadvantages of technical analysis first. The idea that a bell rings to signal when investors should get into or out of the market is simply not credible. John Bogle Technical analysis is backward looking. Trade data of any security is a report of past events, and any analysis based on price action is backward looking. A technical analyst or chartist hopes for a repeat of past events in the future. For example, if the price has bounced from a point in the past, it constitutes a support level. A technical analyst hopes that it is more likely to occur because it happened in the past. This support point could be a horizontal line, a moving average, or a diagonal trend line. The central idea behind all technical indicators is that chart patterns are manifestations of human behavior that do not change over time, so the future shape of the price line can be somewhat predicted. They never claim that the ultimate outcome will be the one that they are anticipating. Things may change, and the ultimate outcome could be the exact opposite of their predictions. Technical indicators are lagging indicators. All technical indicators are based on price data of some past period, and some time must pass for an indicator or chart pattern to develop. On top of it, traders don't rely on one indicator only, and they usually want a confirming signal from a different indicator. Because of the lagging nature of indicators and time loss in waiting for a confirmation signal, the opportunity may be lost completely, or at least a significant portion of price action may have already happened. 
Technical indicators work until they don't. Take any indicator of your choice and apply this indicator to price history. You will find several false signals between good and money-making signals. Losses accumulated by these false signals eat away a significant portion of profits made by accurate signals. Damage is caused by A. The lagging nature of indicators B. The time elapsed between the actual signal and confirming signal C. Many false signals and D. Huge transaction cost Net profits of any technical strategy or system can rarely challenge a broad market index returns. Technical indicators are a form of market timing. I do not know of anybody who has done it, market timing, successfully and consistently. I don't even know anybody who knows anybody who has done it successfully and consistently. John Bogle Nobody can time the market successfully and consistently. Anybody trying to do it is doomed to fail. Technical indicators are a kind of timing the market. That's why most chartists and technicians fail to make profits. Technical analysis is only useful when it is not widely available. Trading is a zero-sum game. That's why any strategy, an indicator, or a signal widely and readily available cannot be profit-making by definition. In a zero-sum game, there is no additional cake that everybody can share. Any profit that a trader makes must be a loss of another trader. That's why if a strategy is widely available for free or is offered on a small payment, can never work. A secret is not a secret if a YouTube commercial offers it for a small payment of $100. A strategy can only work if it is confined to a small group of people. Over time, leakage happens and words are spread. Every best friend has another best friend. Look effortless in hindsight, but hard in real time. Technical signals look so easy and predictable in hindsight that any person who looks at a price chart with an indicator leans to adopt them. Because of this easy-to-do look, new traders fall for it, including me. Nobody is immune to this. Everybody must have to try this and pay the price in money and time. To complete the illusion, so-called master chartists and technical gurus show a couple of cherry-picked charts to their followers, while described strategy worked perfectly to the penny. But they don't show the other thousands of occasions where the same method failed miserably. In real time, following an indicator is complicated and challenging because the future is unknown. All investors know that there is no guarantee of any indicator to be successful 100% of the time so they get uneasy as the market goes the other way. To avoid significant losses, traders come out of a trade prematurely just to see the market turn around and go where they were expecting it to go. Learned from this lesson, next time they don't come out and suffer a huge loss. After a few incidents, they stop believing in the strategy and start searching for another one, and the cycle starts all over again. Conflicting Signals most of the traders follow at least three to four different technical indicators, or their strategy includes multiple signals. A lot of time, these indicators give conflicting signals. Bollinger Bands may be indicating a buy, but a rune may be signaling a sell. Even the same indicator gives conflicting signals in different time frames. For example, MACD may give you a buy signal in the hourly chart and a sell signal in the daily chart. The only solution suggested for this conflict is to pick a strict strategy and keep buying and selling specific signals like robots. Never involve your own emotions and thoughts in the process. I am always puzzled by this suggestion. What if my thoughts are correct and the strategy is flawed? It would be a costly experiment to find out that I was right from the very beginning. Different Strategies for Different Market Situations Another problem with technical strategies is that one strategy is not enough for all market conditions. Sometimes the market trends, and sometimes it bounces back and forth between narrow channels. Sometimes prices go in a defined direction, and sometimes they go sideways for a long time. Sometimes stocks follow the market, and sometimes an individual stock goes in the opposite direction. It is strongly advised by master technical analysts that a trader must change strategies as the market changes. However, if it is easy to identify when the market is changing, wouldn't everybody immediately do it? Hence no benefit is left. The fact is that market direction is apparent only in hindsight. 
nobody can tell when a trending market switches its direction and goes sideways or in the opposite direction. To sweeten the deal, any strategy loses its benefits over time. A system that worked in the 80s or the 90s cannot work in today's market. So you need to find a new strategy that can work now. Only time will tell whether your strategy is superior or your friend's strategy is. Why do people use technical analysis? By this time, you may be thinking that I am totally against all technical analysis, signals, and strategies. To your surprise, this is not the case. I use technical analysis all the time. I just don't buy and sell based on signals. I use a couple of indicators to analyze the overall direction of the market. For me, technical indicators work as a confirmation factor when I am right, and like a consoling arm when I am wrong. Because of the following reasons, I believe technical indicators have some value. Technical indicators work because traders think they work. Technical indicators work because people believe that these strategies work. At support points, enough people buy to make it work. When price crosses the 50-day moving average, enough people sell to make this signal work most of the time. It all started with some trader's emotional attachment with specific price points. Then a technical crowd joins in and makes the whole thing work. If the 50-day moving average didn't work, 100 or 200 will. If one support level is broken, the next will work. If a rune didn't work, RSI or MACD will. At whichever point the price turns its direction, you can link it to a famous technical signal. That's why the belief of traders on technical signals gets stronger. Even when traders are significantly lagging the market returns, they always think that something is wrong either in strategy or execution. Traders try to refine strategies or change them altogether. Traders try to work on their cognitive biases and emotions. Whatever they do, their belief in technical indicators forces them to remain faithful. At any point, enough traders act according to common technical indicators to make it work. Technical indicators are considered easy and idiot proof. Technical indicators are easy to understand and easy to implement. You don't need to know anything about business or the economy. Everything that can be learned is already in the price. There is no benefit in learning a fact that is already reflected in the price. To beat the market, you just need to pick an indicator and buy when a line crosses the other and sell when it crosses back. How much easier can it be? It is a kind of insurance against idiocy and ignorance. Traders try to substitute their lack of knowledge and efforts with a couple of indicators. Instead of acquiring business understanding, they try to take the shortcut. Chapter Takeaways Investors are in the market to make money, not to prove or disprove academic discussions. Follow what works for you and let others follow what works for them. Examination of price and volume of trading is called technical analysis. All other analyses are fundamental analyses. Fundamental analysis is complex and time-consuming. That's why most people take the easy route of technical analysis. All technical indicators generate accurate signals along with a lot of false ones. If a technical indicator is widely known, it will not give you an edge to outsmart the rest. 